I'm Johnny Massacre and welcome to the Johnny Massacre show. On tonight's show, PlayStation 5 reveal and details, maybe even a price. That's about it. No politics. Yay. No politics today. I'm not going to call you a bad person for not thinking a certain way. So let's, <laughs> let's just talk about video games. So as you probably already know, the PlayStation 5 was announced. If you haven't seen it, you must have been living under a rock, mate. So here it is. Well, here they are, I should say. There are two PlayStation 5s. The one on the left has a 4K Blu-ray drive. The one on the right is symmetrical because it doesn't have the drive. And that is known as the digital version. I kind of like the way it looks. What do you think? It looks... It, I kind of like it. And then, of course, I waded into the cesspit of Twitter and was influenced by what other people were saying. Speaking of which, I will detail that a little bit later on. But that's what it looks like. It's white. Racist. But that's... It was actually white and black. Not racist. And blue. De very not racist. But... It's the first PlayStation that's not all black, basically. Racist. So no one's really talking about that. My mate said he thinks white looks a bit shit and it also gets dirty. What do you think? I think it's all right. I think it's cool. I kind of see what he means, though, because I don't really have much white tech. I have some white tech up there, some hardware, and it does stick out a bit. And most of my hardware is actually black. So... A white console. There were other white consoles. Remember the Sega Dreamcast, right? Sega Dreamcast was white. Game Boy was grey, kind of white. It was white. So it's not the first console, but... The Xbox 360 was white, so yeah, it's Sony's turn to go white. Now, there were a bunch of peripherals announced for the PlayStation 5. Why don't you have a look? Here they are. Look, it's a wireless headset and it's a media remote and a camera down here, a little webcam. So I actually managed to source some pictures of the individual peripherals much closer up. And I'd like to share those with you right now. So here's the media remote for the PlayStation 5. This is a bit different. It kind of looks like an Apple TV remote with more shit on it. So it just looks like a regular modern remote. I don't like TV. I'm one of these people who doesn't like TV. People always say, what the have you watched on Netflix? And I say, I don't watch Netflix because Netflix is shit. I, I just like interactive entertainment, basically. I like video games. I like to be absorbed in it. And when I play games, I can really go into another world. I'm not into TV. TV used to be really shit when it wasn't on demand. Now it's on demand. I get my TV fix from YouTube and watching vloggers and shit speak. So I'm not into the whole TV thing. And this Wiimote... I called it a Wiimote, Freudian slip, but it looks like a fucking Wiimote, doesn't it? Copyright infringement, Sony. It does it a bit like a Wiimote. I don't want a console for TV and shit like that, but it makes sense that Sony are doing this because Netflix is so popular nowadays. It only makes sense to integrate it with the PlayStation because way more people are going to buy it and it's just another bridge to the customer to a potential customer, I should say. Now, the interesting thing is Xbox tried this shit with the last generation of consoles. So with the Xbox One, there was a massive backlash because Xbox One, when they announced the console, they didn't focus heavily enough on games, which is why people want to part with their money in the first place. They focus a lot on TV. So to Xbox's credit, they actually saw this coming but you could argue they were a little bit ahead of their time, too far ahead of their time. And so after that Xbox One launch 
show or whatever you want to call it they never really recovered they got off to a really bad start with bad momentum ironically sony are picking up that baton at the right time so they've capitalized on the social media so not social media on the multimedia boom at the right time so it's kind of ironic that xbox actually probably were right in doing this but they were just a little bit ahead of their time anyways that is the media remote for the playstation 5 again it has a white design some of the buttons well nearly all of the buttons are flush with the external white casing so make of that what you will why don't we have a look at some of the other peripherals of course you've already seen the controller i gotta be honest i like the controller it looks more like an xbox pad and i like fps's first person shooters let's be honest the xbox pad is way better for fps the thumbsticks are wicked Look at the thumbsticks now on the PlayStation. They're basically the same as the Xbox. So that looks pretty decent. What I don't get is why the directional pad up here is kind of... looks like the main feature of the pad. Shouldn't that be up there? Maybe it's easier to manipulate here, but I don't understand why this looks like the main thing because it's, it's almost mirrored by the buttons, which are obviously a main part of the pad. This is not a main part, but why is it so big on the pad? I couldn't really understand that. Anyways, the next peripheral is the wireless headset called Pulse 3D. That's the name of the PlayStation 5 wireless headset, if you didn't already know. So it has two bands. It has a black band and a white band. And it just looks very minimalist and quite decent. Headphones, big business these days. So Sony want to jump in on it as well. I don't think serious gamers are going to go with this because it doesn't have a mic as far as I can see, but it must be built in. It must have a built in mic. It doesn't have the little gooseneck mic sticking out, which is something that hardcore gamers like, which is a bit weird, but I'm guessing there's a, there must be a mic built in because for online gaming, you need that shit. If we zoom in a bit, there are some holes here which potentially could be an opening to the microphone but let's not speculate too much here's the hd camera kind of looks like an anthropomorphic face doesn't it it looks like a robot like from short circuit that weird 80s film so that's kind of cute looking and anthropomorphic is the hd camera and that's about it so those are the playstation 5 peripherals bet you hadn't seen them that close up i really spoil you don't i i spoil you on the johnny massacre show spoil you rotten so, interestingly, the PlayStation 5 is fucking massive. I bet you didn't know that either. Yes, it's true. It's fucking massive. You want to see how massive it is? Well, take a look at this blurry low-resolution image. Look at the size of the fucking thing. Apparently, it's bigger than the Xbox X, although it probably has the same mass However, the PlayStation 5 is squashed in the middle, so it goes higher, but that's going to take up a lot of space in your room. It's the biggest, or at least the tallest console ever made in the history of PlayStation and Xbox. If you want a slightly larger look at it, here you go. It's fucking massive. Look at the PlayStation 4. It's nearly half the fucking size. So the PlayStation 5, if you hadn't known is a beast it's fucking massive now i want to talk a little bit about the console design itself now i researched this shit online and you might feel this is a tenuous link but i really really think that this is inspired by 1950s and 1960s visions of the future so the playstation 5 in my opinion is a retro imagining of the future it's what people 60 years ago thought the future was going to be like or at least it was influenced by that mode of thought. And if it's not, it's a massive fucking coincidence. So the Jetsons was a cartoon in the late 50s and 60s. Look at this building from the Jetsons. So this is a Jetsons building. Notice how it features very strong angular lines that combine to make geometric curved shapes with spikes on and there's loads of white shit everywhere so that to me kind of reminds me a little bit of the playstation 5 
people started doing memes about the PlayStation 5 and they placed it next to this Jetsonian architecture, as it's known, apparently. And it fits in like a glove. So look at the PlayStation 5 next to some Jetsonian architecture. So Jetsonian architecture, all 1950s, 1960s, hyper-futurism architecture, has these straight lines that connect and blend and evolve into these curved shapes. And there's spiky shit, there's edgy shit. So look, we've got straight lines and it evolves and blends into curved shapes and it has the spikes here. And you've also, you can't see it here, but the PlayStation 5 has lines in here where the blue neon glow is coming from, which are obviously vents. And you see all these lines here, which look just like the vents. So it just looks like 1950s, 1960s future to me. Have a look at some more Jetson architecture for one second. I'm gonna load up a nice high resolution image of the PlayStation 5, and I'm gonna juxtapose that with this retro future architecture. Have a look. So here's the PlayStation 5. And in this picture, you can see the lines, the grill more clearly. And let's compare this with this Jetson architecture. So we've got the blue glow or the blue core in the center. It's white as well. And the architecture has these straight lines, bam, 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 that evolve and bend into these curved geometric shapes. You've got the straight lines of the PlayStation 5 bending into these curved shapes. And you've got the edges here, these kind of very sharp spikes. You've got that also on the PlayStation. And you've got the lines here, which are illustrated by the ridges on the PlayStation 5. Is it just me? Is it just me? Am I, am I stretching it? Am I reaching for this? Because I don't think I am. I really think this inspired the PlayStation. You can imagine when they designed it, they obviously had some kind of mood board and loads of things and inspirations. They, it didn't just come straight off the dome. They obviously looked at stuff. They had mood boards and stuff. And I bet you this shit was part of the design and was behind it. So it turns out the artists and animators working on the Jetsons were inspired by the futurist architecture that was popping up around Los Angeles at the time in the late 50s and 60s. And the PlayStation 5 does kind of look like a skyscraper, doesn't it? So it's, as far as I'm concerned, it's basically inspired by 60s LA and therefore Hollywood and therefore sci-fi. It's all of those things combined and that kind of makes sense. There's a continuity there. I think the people who created the Jetsons, their offices were in Los Angeles and all of the buildings around it had that Jetsonian look, which is why the Jetsons looks like LA architecture, futuristic architecture from the 50s and 60s and why I think the PlayStation 5 looks like this. And I'll give you one more example relating a bit more to the architecture. So this is a holiday home, a vacation home from the Jetsons. This is the PlayStation 5 and this I'm going to get to in a minute. So this is actually from a Hitchcock movie. I think it's called North by Northwest. And this inspired the Jetsons illustration here. And like I said, the Jetsons animators were all based in LA, which is where Hollywood is. And so they were obviously influenced by the movies and stuff at the time, which I think has then influenced the PlayStation 5. So you can see here, there's a kind of blue core in the middle. You've got these curves here, these nice nice kind of swooping curves. The PlayStation has that there. You've got the sharp edges here. You've got the sharp edges there. And of course, you've got the white color. So I think that illustration of a holiday home in the Jetsons basically looks like a PlayStation 5 on stilts. Now, the image of the Hitchcock movie is from North by Northwest. And that was in 1958. So all this stuff ties in together. LA, Hollywood, science fiction, Jetsonian architecture, geometric shapes. And both the Jetsons and Hitchcock architecture in the illustration and the still of the movie are mid-century hypermodernism. And that is something known as Guji. So I was looking this up. What the fuck is this architecture that might have inspired the PlayStation 5 through its kind of Hollywood and science fiction roots. It's called Guji. That's fucking weird, right? I thought it was Google when I saw it, but it ain't Google. It is Guji. 
So let's have a look at some Guji architecture because it looks like a fucking PlayStation 5. It really does. So if you just give me a second, I'm going to bring up the sexy official image of the PlayStation 5 once more for your viewing pleasure at home or out and about if you're watching on the old iPhone or Android. This is Guji architecture. Look at that. If that red core was blue, that would look like a PlayStation 5. Look at this, you've got the white surface, you've got the straight lines juxtaposed with the angles, which the PlayStation 5 has. You've got the spikes here, which the PlayStation 5 has. So this is called Guji architecture. So you can't tell me that this needle is a million miles away on the PlayStation 5. So PlayStation 5 is basically Guji architecture in the 21st century, which is nuts and it's pretty cool. Again, look at this, this image here with the white, the straight lines, the curves and the blue core. It's so, so similar. So Guji architecture, that's what I think influenced the PlayStation 5. And I want to read you a little bit about Guji architecture from that Bible of knowledge, Wikipedia, because it's pretty fucking interesting. Have a look at my screen. Wikipedia says Guji architecture is a type of futurist architecture influenced by car culture, jets, the space age and the atomic age, which the PlayStation looks like. It looks atomic. It's got that blue glowing core, which you'll find in a nuclear power plant. Just look at pictures of Fukushima for their glowing nuclear core. It looks space age. It kind of looks like a car. It's all those things that inspired that retro futurism, that hyper modernism, hyper futurism, I should say. Guji began in Southern California with the streamlined and modern architecture of the 30s and was popular nationwide during the late 1940s into the mid 1960s. Guji themed architecture was popular among motels, coffee houses and gas stations. The style later became widely known as part of the mid-century modern style, elements of which represent the populux aesthetic. As in Eero Saarinen's TWA Flight Center. I don't know what that is, but I bet you if you look at it, it looks like a PlayStation 5. There we go. It looks like a PlayStation 5. I'm not far off, am I? Wikipedia states, The term Guji comes from a now defunct coffee house in Hollywood, designed by John Lautner. Similar architectural styles are also referred to as Populux or Doo-Wop. Features of Guji include upswept roofs, curvaceous geometric shapes, and bold use of glass, steel, and neon. So in the PlayStation 5's case, yes, it's curvaceous. It uses geometric shapes. It has an upswept roof, so to speak. And they'd put glass on it if they could, but it has neon and a lot of plastic. Guji was also characterized by space-age designs, symbolic of motion, such as boomerangs, flying saucers, diagrammatic atoms, and parabolas and freeform designs such as soft parallelograms and an artist's palette motif. These stylistic conventions represented American society's fascination with space age themes and marketing emphasis on futuristic designs. As with the Art Deco style of the 10s and 30s, Guji became less valued as time passed and many buildings in this style have been destroyed. Some examples have been preserved though, such as the oldest McDonald's stand located in Downey, California. So will the PlayStation 5 become the metaphorical Guji McDonald's stand and be heralded as a classic future design or will it just look like a fucking virgin Wi-Fi router as some people are saying on Twitter? You be the judge, you tell me. But clearly Guji is intertwined with a fascination with space age and right now people are fascinated with that we've got Elon, Elon Musk he's fucking launching rockets into space he's one of the most viral people in the world so is it any wonder that Sony might have looked for inspiration in this kind of world I don't think it's a coincidence I think that's what they did so the games coming for PlayStation 5 that's the important shit right the games the main ones announced are Horizon Zero Dawn a new Resident Evil game called Village, a remake of Demon's Souls, and a new Spider-Man game. Of all the games announced, there are plenty more. Nine of them were sequels. Now look, I don't want to be a miserable cunt and criticise everything because I know people like positivity. They tune into podcasts and radio shows for positivity. But for me, more important than being positive is just being real and being honest and being truthful. And 
I'm going to make a disclaimer now. I make no apologies for what I'm about to say when I criticise these games. And I'm just going to tell you how I feel. There's too many fucking sequels. I want some original shit. And that said, the Resident Evil game does look fucking good. So let's just have a kind of, let's dip our toe into it. Let's not spend too much time watching all the trailers. But I do want to give you some kind of sense of what the games look like and what the graphics look like. So first of all, we'll start with Horizons. So, this game, the, the prequel to this was out on the PlayStation 4 and it, the graphics were amazing. They looked incredible. Now, the graphics in this look decent. I'm not aware if it's PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. I'm not going to bang on about this, but one of my main gripes with newer generation consoles is that most of the launch titles are made for the previous console. So that means games coming out for PlayStation 5 will also come out on PlayStation 4. And that means they're not designed from the ground up to take advantage of the new console's graphical capabilities. And that pisses me off because the much earlier generation of consoles didn't have games that were backwards compatible or that ran on older systems. And I don't know if this game's coming out on PlayStation 4 as well, but I hope not because if it's not, it means the graphics will be tailor-made for PlayStation 5. Speaking of which, the graphics are pretty decent. As for the game, it was decent. It was cool. It was great. But it didn't blow me away, the last one. So it just looks like more of the same. So forgive me for not feeling super excited about Horizon. I don't think the graphics are that different from the PlayStation 4. So next up is something that looks a bit more exciting, in my opinion. That's Gran Turismo 7. Now, bear in mind, there's a, a lot of opportunity for a bit of skullduggery here by Sony because notice how none of these games say they're running on PlayStation 5. I think they would be falling over themselves to advertise that because it markets the product. So take this with a little grain of salt. It might not be running on the PlayStation 5 and it might actually not be indicative of the final product. None of those disclaimers are mentioned on this video. Nobody knows when this is coming out, but look at it. The graphics look fucking awesome. They look wicked very photorealistic. I haven't played the Grand Theft Auto series for ages, let's flick it on, but this does look quite interesting and I am a graphics whore so I am quite keen on this. Now you notice some of the environments are actually not that detailed and that probably is going to allow it to run smoother. I like 60 frames a second, I love 60 frames a second. 60 frames a second if you don't know just means the refresh rate of the game and 60 frames is super smooth. So this does look very smooth and maybe they've been quite clever with it because other than the trees that are very detailed, I think some of the other kind of shapes and geometry is a little bit bland, but it's all in your peripheral and you don't really notice and that might allow it to run at smoother frame rates. So Gran Turismo 7 looking pretty damn sexy, wouldn't you say? That could be some years off. It hasn't been announced when that is coming out. Next game, NBA. 2021 i can't be asked to show it to you it's just this sweaty guy i've never seen a guy sweat so fucking much and he, he slam dunks a ball in a in a net as you'd expect and he's alone and it's all dramatic and moody and there's not much light on the basketball court ratchet and clank see i was ready to cuss this because this is kind of a kiddie game isn't it i never played ratchet and clank it's someone just trying to ride on Disney's coattails and have cutesy cartoon characters and it's family friendly and I like more adult themed games but I turn this on and it's interesting because there are seamless transitions between drastically different worlds and that might be evidence of these much talked about reduced loading times. So before I thought reduced loading times big fucking deal every generation has that but apparently the loading times are much less now because the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X are using SSD storage. And that means you can transition between worlds on the fly, potentially, seamlessly and smoothly. And that looks fucking awesome. So I want to show you what I'm talking about. I was ready to hate this game, but I ended up kind of being interested. Let's look at the transition. So they're flying through the sky. And this looks kind of awesome, but it's not... That wasn't gameplay. This looks like gameplay, but again, it's difficult to tell if this is gameplay. It does look fucking good, though, wouldn't you say? Look at that transition into this crazy neon world, then into another world with no loading times. I've never seen shit like that. So Ratchet and Clank looks kind of fucking awesome, but it's hard to tell whether this is going to be indicative of gameplay. 
only time will tell. But that looks pretty decent, doesn't it? That's something to get excited about. Some decent graphics. Now, my favorite, Resident Evil Village. Resident Evil 7 is known as Resident Evil Village. Let's take a quick look at this and then we'll think about wrapping up for today pretty soon. Here we go. I'm gonna watch the whole thing because it's fucking awesome. His story comes to a close, it says at the beginning of the game. So we are walking through a very dark, atmospheric, spooky looking forest in the winter. We're inside a cabin now and there's shit everywhere. It looks messy. It looks like someone's left quite a while ago, but not too long ago because there's still some kind of food line on the floor. That means someone could still be around. So the forest is a good setting for Resident Evil. It's just a local tale. You're really into that stuff. Quit being so paranoid. This no, no. This looks like Resident Evil 4. That's why I'm getting hyped because that was the best Resident Evil game in my opinion, and that's one of my favorite games of all time. Look, he's even got the same clothes as the villagers in Resident Evil 4. Now look at this, right? Look at the window. The zombie is super fast. Now, that's almost a cliche in zombie movies. They all used to be slow. And then as zombie m movies evolved, they got faster, like in the movie 28 Days Later. But Resident Evil, as far as I know, hasn't had these super fast zombies. So it's a natural progression of the genre. And I think Resident Evil 4 style gameplay with super fast zombies will be awesome. Now there's a lot of cool imagery here. This looks so much like Resident Evil 4. Look at that, this is like PT. This has sent shivers down my fucking spine. Any game that's influenced by PT, the cult classic game on PlayStation 4, look it up if you haven't, is, is welcome. Because that is a game that never came out, that should have come out, that was supposed to be developed by Hideo Kojima and the director of Pan's Labyrinth, but it never did because of politics inside Konami. Anyways, it looks like that classic game is influencing Resident Evil 7. Look how spooky that looks. I'm gonna keep pausing it. Okay, shotguns in it, shotgun. Shotguns and zombies go together well, don't they? We got something really cool coming up. It just looks so much like Resident Evil 4. Okay, so look at this spooky shit. We got pestilence, we got particle, of, particle effects. Look at this creepy fucking face over there. And then I don't know what era this is from, but it's obviously very retro and beautiful classic clothing and just looks so fancy. It's so atmospheric. I like the tones, I like the color palette. And I love the, I just love the tone of this. This looks fucking awesome. And you wait to the end because there's a there's a big reveal for fans of the series. Wicked graphics. Wicked environments and vistas. Resident Evil in the snow, why not? Resident Evil Village is what it's called. Here we go. Chris? Sorry. Boom. Why? All right, so that's a classic zombie movie trope where someone used to know someone who they're in love with and they've turned into a zombie and then they have to kill that person. So, man, that shit, that shit looks good. Coming 2021, they kept that one quiet, didn't they? That's what I want. Resident Evil said, I'll buy the fucking console for that. If that's like Resident Evil 4, I'm all over it. And I didn't like the way Resident Evil 7 was supernatural. It's not supposed to be a supernatural game. It has supernatural elements, but it's it's got to be about body horror. It's got to be about zombies. So fuck all that supernatural shit. Keep that to a minimum and make it all about zombies. If they do that, if they make it like Resident Evil 4, this could be a fucking classic. So I'm, as you can tell, I'm pretty excited about that. See, I can be positive. That's one game I was excited about. There's a Spider-Man game coming. Meh, just another fucking big Disney money spinner. There's a remake of Demon's Souls, another sequel. 
the the other there's there's various other games and stuff but the one that i wanted to well there's two i want to show so this is the last two i'm going to show you one of them is called death loop now this is an fps and this looks fucking decent let's watch it together here we go this is by, I think this is by Bethesda. So look, influenced by Halo, there's a big Halo-esque ring there. Heavily stylized game, it looks a little bit Art Deco. So we're going back to old time America. Very colorful, rich greens and reds. She is not making this easy. Pastel colors. Cool atmospheric music, a little bit like Twin Peaks. Now this looks different, doesn't it? See, I'm all about originality. It looks fucking violent. It looks well violent. I could fuck with this. I want to play this. I'm looking at it and I just feel like I want to play it. Stealth elements. Jumping off the rooftop and snapping necks. Stabbing the guy in his eye. Blasting the guy with some special powers. So this game seems like it's a little bit influenced by Destiny, which I'm not a massive fan of. And so I think this is the this is the the kind of angle of the game, the special angle. It's all about time travel because he rewound time there. So there's obviously some time traveling element involved. Heavily stylized cutscenes, animated in 2D, which are really nice. This place is paradise. Lots of people wearing masks and lots of symbolism. Wolves, devils, gas masks. I try to escape. Blindfolds. Lots of sinister themes in this game. Clandestine themes. Oh, I mean, that, I, I kind of lost words about how cool that was. He just shot the guy with a shotgun and then he grabbed him from across the room with some kind of telekinesis and threw him against the wall piecing together the puzzle there's eight targets so there's eight targets so this is a classic theme of an action franchise where there's eight just or however many bad guys you have to go and get this is what they look like and then there's they have to go and get them all and that's simple narrative and it works and i'm i'm all for that it's a little bit like blade runner my favorite movie reefs protect and a real pain in my ass she may kill me a million times. So Eventually. the characters are really fleshed out here. And this is in keeping with the modern trends of Fuck. FPSs like Rainbow Six, for example. And well, uh, what's the other one? I'm, my brain's not working, but most of the current first person shooters have really strong characters, which isn't what it used to be like. It, they used to just be one character and all these faceless characters. But now they've almost crossed the fighting game genre with the FPS genre where they give all of the characters a backstory and that adds a connection between the player and the character and just makes the universe so much richer and fleshes it out more and people enjoy playing the game more it makes it much more viral online and people talk about it more because they relate to the characters and the characters take on a life of their own beyond the franchise through the fans and their yeah. obsession and adoration of these characters so death loop see I, I don't know how they're gonna make the time travel work in that game in multiplayer because obviously when you're playing in real time you can't rewind time but maybe in the, in the single player only you're, you're gonna see that or maybe they'll come up with some crazy new scheme to implement that into multiplayer so anyways the last game I'm gonna show you is called Pragmata and I think this is two years away but I really like the graphics in this because they don't look fake as in they're running on a workstation. It feels like it's running on PlayStation 5. That's just my anecdotal opinion, but it feels real. And this is tailor-made for PS5, I believe. It's not coming out for PS4. So I've got high hopes for this. I think it looks really decent. It's got hallmarks of Acura, the classic anime, classic in the West, at least in Japan. Surprising amount of people don't know about Acura. So look at these graphics, really, really nice. You've got super detailed environment. It looks like we're in Times Square. I think you can see this, the um, Empire State in the background. And there's an astronaut. And this looks kind of weird. Why is an astronaut on the city streets? Well, you're going to find out. He just fired some kind of flare into the sky that exploded, and now there's particles everywhere. He's flicked on some scanning device on his helmet, a very futuristic device, and now he's seeing 
he's seeing the shapes of um, humanoids with it, much like in a style reminiscent of Ridley Scott's Prometheus Alien prequel. Now you've got a little girl next to a hologram cat. So this is Blade Runner themes, perhaps, with the animal themes. The little girl graphics are really cool. The lighting is amazing. Um, the dynamic lighting. It's not called dynamic lighting. There's some other word for it. I've forgotten. You have to forgive me. But the lighting is awesome. It's it's um, just reacting in real time to everything that's going on. And now we've got this weird twisted amalgamation of of conduit and skyscrapers spiraling into the sky like a pathway. And they're following that pathway into space. All this shit's flying around. This almost feels a bit like a Christopher Nolan movie. There's a lot of mystery to it. Science fiction themes, very grandiose. A little bit influenced by the Inception movie. I would add and just look at it it looks really cool doesn't it and if this is really PlayStation 5 graphics this is gonna look fucking awesome I can't wait to play this there don't seem to be a lot of details about it but I'm guessing it's gonna be a first-person shooter so Pragmata what do you think of that do you, are you also hyped about the graphics we've got a um, post-credit cutscene here where they're standing on the moon and yeah, science fiction is the order of the day, not only with the games, but also the PlayStation 5 design. Now, moving on to the final news for today. We've got some news about the OS of the PlayStation 5, which you might not have heard yet, and also about the pricing. So the OS, there's a little teaser. There's going to be a complete redesign of the OS. Check it out. Tom Warren tweeted this out. Look. So that is a very, very brief preview of what the new PlayStation OS is going to look like. Now, I'm really, really fucking happy that they are going to redesign the OS because the PlayStation OS is fucking terrible. I remember the original Microsoft OS. Xbox Live, it was called. I think it came through on the PlayStation 360. It was fucking amazing. It was simple. It was minimalist. It was well designed. It was responsive and functional, instantaneous. The PlayStation OS, you do anything. You click on a game or you click on make a party and it waits and it waits and it waits and it loads. It's fucking awful. It's always down. So I read online, this is, this is official, that they're completely redesigning the PlayStation OS from the ground up, pixel by pixel, they said. And I can't fucking wait. Get your fucking act together, Sony. You've got so much cash. Make this a seamless, simple, minimalist, functional, aesthetically beautiful experience, please. And finally today, we've got news on the price. So apparently on f the French Amazon, this was up the PlayStation 5 and it looks like the digital version for 499 euros. That would mean it's probably going to be about 499 dollars. So that said, someone did find an earlier version of the PS5 listing, which listed both the price of the console and the release date as seen in the screenshot above. And if the date is accurate, the PS5 will sell for around the 500 mark on November the 20th and these numbers have come out before people have been talking about this shit on reddit so it seems like there is something to this $500 euro price and November 20th release date so as I said that price likely amounts to $499 for the US that's always how it works with euros and dollars for console launches and the original retail price for PS4 was 400 So this would be $100 more expensive. A lot of people are saying it's going to be more expensive. Could be true. But you have to take it with a grain of salt because it's a, it's a price leak and it is still speculation as of now. But I'm predicting in the next month they're going to, they're going to open pre-orders for this thing because it's going to be July and it's coming soon. So... It's also not clear if that's the Blu-ray version or the digital version, 
But suffice to say, I think the digital version will obviously be even cheaper than that. So it could be less than 499 if that predicted price is correct. So that's it for today's Johnny Massacre show. Politics free. What do you think? We just chatted about PlayStation. That was cool. I wanted to get that off my chest for a while. Guess what? I'm making a video about loads of political stuff. It's, it actually could be a fucking book. It's, there's so much shit. I'm taking hours every day writing it. Who knows if it will ever come out. But stay tuned anyways because you might just get it delivered to your email soon. If you hit that notification bell, of course. What's going on in my life? Fuck, man. Just busy as fuck. When there's some big news, I will tell you. But as always, moving forward on the music front. I've been Johnny Massacre. And I tell you what, mate. You better be back for the next video. Otherwise, I'll be coming around your house. Make sure to like and subscribe. And hit that notification bell. Because that's what all those other cunts tell you to do. Laters.